Hey, what's up, YouTube? So today we're gonna. Oh, I kind of like this pose. I actually don't want to leave it. We're gonna talk about some movies. I have pages and pages of notes that I have to all give within a few short, concise minutes. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about Christian movies in 2021. What can we expect? What movies are coming out and are they gonna be any good? So let's talk about it. But before we do, let's do a quick recap of 2020, okay? All right, let's talk about 2020. First of all, let me take off these glasses because they did not go well with video. So we had a number of different films that came out last year. One of the biggest films of last year though was I Still Believe. This was the Irwin's Brother film that they made kind of in the same genre as the film I Can Only Imagine. This film focuses on Jeremy Camp and tells his story as he's beginning his music career and meets and marries his first wife. But it's an incredibly sad story because it tells how his first wife died of cancer so it's a heart-wrenching story a lot of emotional moments it's not one that you're gonna watch without shedding a tear for sure so next up is free Burma Rangers this is a documentary about a group of philanthropists who begin in Burma and you watch as they travel around the world to war-torn countries and risk their lives to save people from danger from war and from death it's really an incredibly inspiring film and likely one of the best Christian documentaries that has ever been made this film will bring to tears to your eyes I promise you the next film is I am Patrick this is kind of a documentary but more of a doc drama that focuses on the life of st. Patrick of Ireland you watch as he gets kidnapped by pirates and is brought to Ireland and eventually escapes only to come back one day believing that God has called him to be a missionary to Ireland this is really a pretty interesting story and it's really cool because it features the Lord of the Rings star John Reese Davies the one and only this film brings new perspectives Perspective to a story that many of us just don't really know a lot about. Next up, we have Home Sweet Home. We're getting into comedy territory. Honestly, I haven't seen it, but it looks like a really funny comedic movie about a coffee barista who meets this man named Jason and falls in love with him. In her effort to get to know him, she decides to pretend to be a Christian and to work on a project alongside him. The problem or the catch is that he builds houses for charity and she knows nothing about building houses. But along the way of her helping out she learns valuable lessons about faith and serving the next film is selfie dad so this film features the comedian michael jr who plays as a man named ben marcus who is a hired editor of a dull reality show named rosie's roses but one day he discovers youtube and realizes that he could make money off of it and decides to put content out there which ends up going viral as a new founded youtuber he begins to put time and effort but this time and effort takes him away from his family which eventually leads to a crisis in his family which causes him to begin ultimately driving him closer to God than ever before. All right, so that is this piece of paper. I'm almost tempted to rip it, but I might do multiple takes of this video, so let's not do something stupid like that. Now, we're talking about 2021. What movies are coming out? Let's go through them real quick. So the first movie, I'm very interested about this because Courageous, the film that came out almost 10 years ago, honestly, is getting a new edit and a new ending. This is really curious. So apparently the Kendrick brothers are reassembling the cast of Courageous 10 years later and shooting a new ending showing the characters of the film 10 years after the events of the movie as well as new scenes and likely just an overall re-edit of the movie. I'm not super excited about this because even though Courageous is my favorite Kendrick brothers film, it's still going to be the same movie just a little bit different in my opinion, but I might be wrong. The next film we have is American Underdog The Kurt Warner Story. I don't know much about this film not much has been released beyond a log line and the cast lineup they have Zachary Levi who is the lead actor of Shazam in this film that focuses on the life of Kurt Warner telling the story how he rose from his humble beginnings to becoming a football star quarterback now this is a film by the Irwin brothers so, so they must be packing in a lot of work they released a film literally last year now they're already working on another one the next film is a week away now this is a film that's gonna be on Netflix and focuses on a young man who faces a choice between juvenile detention and church camp. At first reluctant, the atmosphere begins to tug on his heart. His name is Will. While he falls in love with a beautiful woman. Now, okay, me being a little 
dramatic. But I first gotta say, this girl got some interesting taste in guys. If she knows anything about him, this bad boy coming into camp, and she's just like, huh, I love you. Does she realize, like, he was on the verge of going to juvenile detention? Great taste in boys. And from what I've heard, Netflix is actually really excited about film. And I would say rightly so, because it has a pretty strong cast. Roman White is a director. He's done work for people like Carrie Underwood, Justin Bieber, and Taylor Swift. I don't know if you brag about doing work for them, but mm, features the well-known star Bailey Madison. And also, Adam Watts is working on this film as a music producer. He's done music for High School Musical 3. I like the fact that it's going to have remixes of some popular Christian songs. Next up, the film you've been waiting for for over a decade. We have the sequel to The Passion of the Christ. This film is going to be called Passion of the Christ Resurrection. We don't know an exact release date. We're not going to get released prior to 2022, but we will learn more about this film this year. Jim Caviezel has supposedly received the third draft of the script. It says it's going to be the biggest film in world history. Uh, that's a pretty big claim, but who knows? The first film was huge. It's probably going to be shooting this year. Out of all likelihood, we may actually get a, a trailer this year. The film really was delayed a lot by deep theological study because you may not realize it, but Mel Gibson actually seems like a very theological person. So this film is likely going to focus on the period right after Jesus' death and before his resurrection and just a period of time after his resurrection as he impacts with the disciples and just portraying the impact that his death had on the world. It's definitely going to be controversial, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that we can at least agree it's going to be a very powerful film. Next up, a lot of you guys are going to be hyped about this. The Chosen is officially a multi-season show now. So last year, they were shooting season two and we'll have no later than Easter this year the release of at least some of the episodes for this season. We don't know a lot about it. We know it's going to be a continuation of the great cast and great writing that the first season was. The first season was just amazing. It blew people away. So it's going to be more of the same great content, but we don't know how many episodes. We don't know what the episodes are going to be about. Now, what's really exciting is when they were shooting this film, they were actually able to procure access to a new set in Utah, which just means they're going to be able to express their creativity in new ways. So this is going to be exciting. I can't tell you a lot about it because there's not a lot of info out on it, but no, it's coming and it's going to be out very soon. Next film is My Brother's Keeper. I'm honestly not excited about this film. It doesn't look like it's going to be anything that amazing, but let's give it a chance. It features courageous and war room actor T.C. Stallings telling the story of a man named Travis Fox, who is the last living member of his military unit that was completely murdered in the field of battle. Now, he was there watching as they were killed, which means that when he comes back to America after serving the military, he begins to have PTSD. Through this trying time, he begins to turn to God for help, reaching a level of faith that he's never had before in his relationship with God. But as he begins to kill, new secrets emerge that begin to try his faith all over again and test him to see if he really will stand in his walk with God. The next film that we have is Don't Say My Name. I don't know a lot about this film. Not has been released. I know they're doing fundraising at this point and haven't raised the full amount. This film is going to focus on the topic of human trafficking. It's definitely a necessary message. It's alarming the amount of human trafficking that's done even inside of this country. This film focuses on a human trafficking survivor showing her path to recovery and healing after the traumatic experiences of her past. It's also going to focus on a special agent named Colbert, him and his fellow agents as they hunt down the people leading this human trafficking ring. Watching the trailer, I don't think it's going to be anything that amazing as far as the filmmaking abilities and the storytelling, but just like the film before, it's going to have a powerful message. Final film in the list is Redeeming Love. Now, this is a pretty elaborate storyline. It's based on the film written by Francine Rivers. Maybe some of you have read it. It's definitely got some mature level content as it's focused on the story of Jose in the Bible. It focuses on a girl named Sarah, who's later renamed Angel, who goes through years of sexual abuse, eventually turning to prostitution, since this is what she was taught by her mother. As she goes through dangerous cycles of prostitution, she finally one day meets a man named Michael, who believes that God has called him to marry her. Although she does turn to Michael at one point in the film, she continually runs away from him. But Michael continues to exercise unfailing love, which really represents the love that Christ has for us. Finally, Angel, who keeps going back to her ways of prostitution, meets a Christian family named the Axels, who lead her to Christ. And eventually it goes back to Michael to start her own family. Like I said, this is definitely going to be a mature film. I don't know if it's going to be PG-13 or R. So we'll learn more about what we can expect from this film. Now, to just recap and give my overall thoughts for the year, I think this is going to be an exciting year for Christian film. Now, me, I'm an action, like, sci-fi kind of guy. 
Right. Which means, you know, I wish there were more Christian action movies. I don't think there's going to be any this year. I need the Burns Brothers to put out some content. I really do. From that angle, I don't think there's going to be a lot of films that fit in with the type of films that are highly grossing successful films in the market, which tend to be action and adventure films. Looking past that, I think we're going to have a good number of films coming out this year, especially because a lot of films from last year across the film industry delayed the releases until this year because of what happened last year. They weren't able to have theatrical releases, which means we'll likely have a lot of films coming out this year. Whether they'll actually be good films, I can't promise. I mean, we have Kendrick Brothers, we have a Netflix release, we have Irwin Brothers. We will have a couple of good titles. So I am cautiously optimistic about this year. I think it's going to be better than most, but hey, we'll see. Maybe one day I'll come back and regret what I've said here, or I'll say, Joseph, you're so good at this predicting stuff. So guys, thanks for checking out this video. Tell me which one of these films you're most excited about watching. And you know what? With that, I'm just going to do another one of my abrupt, weird endings.